Janice Evans is an African-American woman who lives in a small town in eastern Mississippi with her child and her grandson. She's about my age, and I've gotten to know her over the last few years. About 20 years ago, she saw an ad in the newspaper that offered to teach how to deal cards at casinos. And you'll find her in the evenings dealing cards at a local Indian reservation where they have a casino, and she specializes in blackjack and poker. But on Sundays, you'll find her at church. Church is a cornerstone of Janice's life. Her father is a pastor in a small church. She tithes 10% of her income as much as she can. She um, believes that being in church really matters a great deal. And if she knows if she's not there, she's going to hear about it. Janice is not a gambler, but her life is bound up with the gambles of the people in the casino. Often she wants them to stay home and save their money and be home with their families. But she knows that her life is bound up with theirs. When they're doing well, she's doing well. When they're losing, she's losing. And she sees this in her paycheck. A lot of her paycheck is made up of tips, or in the gambling world, what they call tokes, tokens of gratitude. The gamblers are feeling a lot more gratitude when they're winning. And Janice sees that. She also earns a lot more in the summer. It's when the casino's full, people are out, they're having a good time, most of them. She sees a lot smaller paychecks in the winter when people are staying home and doing some other things. Janice bears those risks. In many ways, even though she doesn't gamble herself, she is also taking a lot of risks. Janice also earns more when University of Alabama pay, plays Mississippi State and she knows that the Alabama fans are going to stop at the casino and gamble all night after the game. It's all on her shoulders. We see this in Janice's paychecks. Janice's paychecks go up and down through the year. We track Janice's paychecks every two weeks. And you can see how they swing from a high of $1,200 to a low of about $900, a swing of about 30%. And if what you knew about Janice was that she had a certain average income, which is given by the red line, you'd think she's doing OK in her part of Mississippi. But once you see the ups and downs of her paychecks, you can see why Janice is stressed. You can see why life is difficult. You can see her strategies, her obstacles, and her challenges. Janice was one of 253 households, families, that we got to know, my partners and me and a team we had created, through a project called the US Financial Diaries. We wrote a book called The Financial Diaries. It's co-written with Rachel Schneider of the Center for Financial Services Innovation. And what we saw with those families started to add up to a new picture of what's going on in America. Now, the families were all low and moderate income, all had workers. They were all working to get ahead. They were not just in Mississippi, but also San Jose, Cincinnati, New York City. They all came together to show a picture, and not just a snapshot. Now, we've got lots of snapshots, and snapshots are revealing. We have snapshots which are photos, but we also have essentially snapshots which are data that just give a, a snapshot at one point in time, like, say, the unemployment rate. The unemployment rate today is pretty low. It's 4.3% nationally. That's pretty low. But it only counts jobs. And like Janice, a lot of people have steady jobs, but they don't have steady income. And to see that, you need a different kind of picture and a different kind of data, data that follows people day in, day in, day in and day out, week in and week out, to create something like a data movie that can tell a richer story about life today. Because when we did that, we saw some remarkable things. We saw that across our sample of 253 households, on average, they spent five months out of the year with income either 25% above or 25% below their monthly average. We often assume that people have some basic stability, but that's not what we saw in our data. 
And with that instability came a difficulty budgeting, planning, saving, doing all those things that we think are fundamentals of a good financial life. Now, those ups and downs were happening for a variety of reasons. As with Janice, some of it was from earning tips. Some of it was from living life earning commission, like a truck mechanic we got to know. Sometimes people would depend on side jobs, so side jobs would come and go. But increasingly, it's hourly workers whose hours go up and down, out of their control. And that's happening increasingly in the retail sector and in the service sector, which are growing parts of our economy. Those ups and downs play out not just in inconveniences with childcare and other planning, but also in people's paychecks. And it wasn't just our households. Our early work inspired the Federal Reserve to start asking questions about income ups and downs and other ups and downs in their national surveys. And when they looked at thousands of households, they saw something similar. One third of Americans reported that their monthly income went up and down to some degree. And for many, that was creating financial problems. For 13%, it's reported not being able to pay the bills on time simply because of those ups and downs. And those challenges were more pronounced for Hispanic and black households. The challenges meant a, a lot of different things. And one part of it was not being able to plan because the ups and downs meant it was difficult to stay focused and keep to a budget, no matter how diligent one tried to be. But it was more than that. We also saw people who were not on average poor, like Janice, who because of the ups and downs experienced some months of the year when they were below the poverty line. It put them in an odd position of feeling poor some of the time, but not the rest of the time. But more than that, our system and our policies are not designed for those kinds of ups and downs and those kinds of needs. And at the same time, we saw households that were poor, but had months when they weren't poor. And they also weren't sure how to take advantage of that or saw that the system really wasn't working with those situations. But Janice wasn't passive in the face of all this. She understood what was going on. She was working to try to fix things. And she had some solutions. They weren't perfect, and she knew they weren't perfect. But one of them was that a few years back, she had gotten in trouble with payday lenders. Now, you know you can get trapped with payday lenders. And Janice had gotten trapped. What she did to try to keep that at bay was she realized that if she didn't have any checks, that she couldn't go to the payday lender. Because in her part of Mississippi, a payday lender requires that you have a post-dated check that you hand over in order to get your loan. So when her checks ran out, she didn't order another supply. Janice said, well, if I didn't have the checks, I'm not tempted anymore. This is a costly strategy. Now Janice, when she pays her bills, she uses money orders. And if you look just from outside, you think, wow, that's irrational. That's just crazy. That's costly. But once you see the ups and downs and the challenges and the difficulties, you can start to see the logic. Another thing Janice did was she opened an account at a credit union that's an hour south of her. She did that because she figured it would stop the temptation to just withdraw money on a whim. It's hard enough to keep saving, but hard enough also to keep money in the bank. She went one step further. She had an ATM card. She snipped it up. And she said, hey, that's fine with me. She liked the distance, she liked the inconvenience, but she knew that if she really, really needed to get the money, she could drive there. But those aren't perfect solutions. Janice deserves better and needs better and could use other solutions, but we can start to learn from some of what she's doing. One day at church, Janice was having a rough time. It's been a difficult week, it's been a difficult month. Her father called a prayer line. And congregants lined up down the center aisle, waiting for a prayer or blessing, something to help ease an illness or a struggle. And when Janice's turn came up, her father put out his hand on her forehead. He lowered his voice so that only she could hear. 
and he didn't offer her a prayer. He said, you've got to stop worrying. It'll be all right. And Janet said, in that moment, she knew she still had troubles, and she's continued to have troubles, but a weight lift, and it became easier. But Janet said, I try to be a good person. I'm not an important person. I just do what I do, and I go home. But I try to be a good person. We met a lot of good people through the Financial Diary study. But they were struggling. And participating in our study, frankly, was hard work for them. It was tedious. They had to open themselves up and discuss parts of their lives that were often embarrassing or painful. Because we asked them to share with us everything they did throughout the year, every financial transaction, every gift of the church, every interaction with the government, everything. And we asked them, why, why did they do that? We were glad they did, but we wanted to know in the end what caused them to participate in this study. They said, you know, it's often that we feel invisible. And more than that, our struggles feel invisible. And maybe by participating in this project, people can start to see what's really going on with us. Can start to see what it's like to have steady jobs but not steady pay. To be poor some of the time but not all the time. To save like crazy. Work really hard to save, but not in the end having long-term savings. In fact, three quarters of the families we met, their savings in the bank were earmarked for spending within the year. They weren't recklessly spending at all. They were saving, but they weren't ending up with long-term savings. And they said if people can start to see these challenges and start to work with them, then we'll, we'll join your effort. So a small step that we can take is just to remind ourselves that it's not always right to extrapolate from our own experiences or just to look at aggregate data or even annual incomes like Janice's. But to remember that life isn't just lived year by year. It's also lived month by month and week by week.